All right, middle school and high school boys and girls, um, it is time for us to dig in. So we are going to be learning together two different lessons. So middle schoolers, you all are going to be joining me in doing God and Church. Your books, your workbooks are blue, all right? High schoolers, you are going to be doing with me God and Life. Your workbook is green. There it is in the screen. So what I need you to do real quick is grab your workbook, grab a pencil, and grab a piece of paper. Get those items, and then we're going to start our lesson. So I'm going to give you guys about 13 seconds here to go and grab all those supplies. So workbooks, a pencil, and paper. It should all be right there on the countertop for you. So everybody pause, run and shuffle and get your supplies. If you need to pause me to make sure that you can get them all in time, go right ahead. All right, so now that you have your things, I want everybody to write your name inside of your workbook. These workbooks need to come with you every single week. We cannot forget them because they are a huge tool in helping us complete our lessons every week. So write your name on the inside of your workbook and on the cover of your workbook so that it's easy to identify as being yours. And as we do, as you guys do that, I'm going to share with you a little bit about what to expect during our times together in this class. So um, every week we're going to come together, middle school and high schoolers, we're going to do our lesson together. Um, the reason why we're going to do it together is because truthfully a lot of the concepts are the same, but we're going to be learning it in two different ways. So high schoolers, you're going to be able to dig a little bit deeper into the scripture, and uh, middle schoolers, yours is a little more interactive and playful, uh, which is just perfect for both of those age groups. But we're going to learn the lesson together, and then at the end of our time, we're together for an hour, so about 45 minutes we'll do our lesson together, and then the last 15 minutes we're going to split up and break into two. And our middle schoolers, you guys are going to work on your final project. So your final project is going to be a video project. You are going to make every week starting next Sunday night a video at the end of class where one of you is going to be a news reporter and that news reporter is going to interview the other kids that are participating in the class about what they have learned. So get your acting on, be excited every time. We're going to have a different news reporter and that should give everyone an opportunity to uh, step into that role of the news reporter. Um, God in Life, the high school group, um, we are going to do something a little bit different. While they're working on their newscast and making their crazy videos to show their parents, um, we are going to be working through some deeper discussion questions that are part of your lesson. And it will be great. We'll have some one-on-one -on -one time to just kind of talk through those, um, those deeper level uh, ideas. And then there is a project each week for you to do um, so that you can work on getting your, um, your award for this, uh, for this program too, for the God in Life program. So that being said, let's jump in with what we're talking about this week. This week, we are talking about a journey. And truthfully, God in Me is a journey. Some of you guys have been doing uh, this program, the Pray program, for a long time, right? You did God in Me, you did God in Church, or God in Family, and now you're doing God in Church. And so you've kind of already been on that journey of year after year, digging a little deeper and learning a little bit more about what God has to do with your life. But the truth is, is that all of our lives are a journey. Um, and those journeys can be crazy and wild. So give me just a second. I want to tell you about a crazy wild journey that I took. This journey was actually a trip that I took with my family the uh, summer after I graduated from high school. So I had huge plans for what I wanted to do the summer after I graduated high school. I wanted to spend time with my friends. I wanted to get um, all these part-time jobs where I could make money to help pay for college. I wanted to pack for college. I wanted to have it all packed the day after I graduated so that I'd be ready to go three months later, right? I had big plans. And my mom came to me and said, hey, Kelly, we're going to go to the Grand Canyon. And I thought, oh, I do not have time 
for my Grand Canyon, for the Grand Canyon. Like, this is my big summer moment, right? And uh, she, uh, she insisted, and guess what? She won because she's paying for college, right? Um, she won, and we loaded up in my grandparents' Ford Windstar van. It was, um, it was mint green, so it looked like like the mint green ice cream with like chocolate chips in it. That was the color of their van. And we loaded up my stepdad, my mom, my brother, myself, and my grandma, my grandpa, six people in a Ford Windstar van, and we drove to the Grand Canyon. The journey was long. We drove for three days straight. My grandpa had cancer, so he couldn't ride very long. We'd ride, we'd drive, it'd get, four it'd get to be four o'clock, and my grandpa would be like, well, it's time to stop. And we'd get dinner, and we'd get a hotel room, and we'd sleep. And the journey was so difficult. I ended up with a stomach bug and had to ride in the back of the van. Nobody believed I was sick until somebody else got the stomach bug, too. And then they got all the mercy, right? Like, everybody was like, oh, you're not sick. But then when somebody else got sick... You know how that is if you have a younger sibling. Anyways, um, we took this terrible long trip all the way to the Grand Canyon. It was wild. I could tell you stories for days about what we experienced. But all of a sudden, we arrived at the Grand Canyon, and it was stunning. It was breathtaking. It was one of those life-changing moments where you look out, and you're like, oh, my goodness, God did all of this? This was amazing. Now, would I have got to have that stunning, God eye-opening moment if I wasn't willing to go on the journey? No, not at all whatsoever. Uh, the journey, though it was not necessarily enjoyable, was part of getting to the place that God was leading us and that God wanted us to see. And that's true about life. That's true about our life with Jesus. That's true about our walk with God. That's true about our journey with the church. And so to get us started, we're going to do a little activity to introduce everyone to each other. And I want you to draw a picture of the journey of your dreams. So if you could go anywhere, what would that place be? I want you to get a piece of paper and, well, you've already got your piece of paper because we did that at the top of the lesson, right? And I want you to draw this picture of the place of your dreams and um, maybe even show in there like how you're gonna get there. So maybe there is like a jet and the Eiffel Tower and just give this beautiful picture of this journey of your dreams that you want to go on. And I want you to fold your paper in half and you're going to give it to Miss Angie. And Angie then, after everybody has turned in their papers with the picture of their journey on that nobody else saw but the person writing it, is going to show everybody each, each picture one at a time. And we're going to try to guess whose journey that is. So everybody take your paper, take your pencil, Draw your journey, fold it in half, turn it into Miss Angie. She is going to then open them up and let you see and see if you can guess whose journey it is that you're going on, uh, whose journey it is that you see in that picture. So do that activity and then we'll jump back in with the next video.